You call that Mexico, Mexico, Mexico. They talk that Spanish flow, Spanish flow, Spanish flow. Tequila every night, every night, every night. You're just a tenafight, tenafight, tenafight. Welcome to You Call That Mexico. And we are live. Let us in the comments if you can hear me and see me. Oh, all right. And uh, I think we can go live to Glasgow. Hello. Come on, Black. How's it going? All right. I'm good, mate. I'm good. And thanks for thanks for co coming on the pod. And we're just talking there. The internet, is the internet working okay? Can we just double check that first of all? That's pretty good for you. When you were doing that intro, it was terrible, but it's, it's fine now. <laughs> Start as you mean to go on. Hopefully we'll be okay. Um, hi, Matt. Thanks for coming on the show. It's great to hear. You've been busy. You've been busy. You've just been a... We've been voting battle. Sorry, We've the connection went a bit there. Aye, aye. Sorry, the connection went a yep. bit straight, but... Okay, man, well, just, let's, let's just uh, start with the... Uh, I like to take things back to the start. I like to start at the start. So, uh, wh how long have you been involved in comedy for? Um, probably about five, I'd say about five years. Just um, started doing it with my brother, uh, Paul, you might know. You might have heard him. Aye, um, aye, so we just started doing sketches together and... Uh, started putting them out online and they kind of they went quite viral so we we ended up doing stuff with bbc and then a few things on the telly and then lockdown happened and it kind of just fucking set everyone back but then that's when i kind of decided i wanted to do stand up do you know what i mean um and can i write stuff myself rather than with paul <laughs> and you've got the classical festival which I believe is the, is it 19th of March? Sorry, am I getting Wait, right? 21st it is, 21st. Okay. In the pavilion. It's a big gig, man. I know, mate, I'm fucking I'm nervous, but I'm excited for it. It's just a lot, it's a lot of preparation, a lot of rehearsing, because I'm, I'm involved with my two pals, Sean and Ben. Uh, I don't know if you've seen much of the York brothers, Sean and Ben. You, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, so um, I thought I thought we'd get them involved because they're they're very talented and I and I thought about I wanted to do an hour of stand up but then I also thought I should really do like I really just wanted to do some sort of live James English thing, do you know what I mean? Because I just just did that small sketch was I just feel that there was more there was room for more <laughs> slack. <laughs> no, I, I so I just I, I wanted to I thought a live James English pod would be fucking hilarious. So. So right, is, it actually, is, that, is, that, is that the setup? Is it going to be a, a James? So it's going to be like 40, 45 minutes of stand-up probably for me. Have a, I'll have an opening act as well and uh, have a wee, have a break. And then probably a bit between 20 to 30 minutes of uh, a live it and goes. Well, we're going to try, for, for anyone who doesn't know, for anyone who hasn't seen it, I, I already said it, it's the funniest thing I've seen on the internet last year and it's... Uh, Let's just go, let's just go to it and uh, watch it for people I haven't seen. Uh, Jigsaw Tiger saying that my uh, reception's a bit ropey. Yeah, I know. I, I don't know what I, I think. I think I think I fixed it. But bear with me, guys. I, I'm live from Mexico. It's just, it is what it is. We're trying our best here. My team, my team is working behind the scenes, fixing wires and shit. But this is uh, the James Eng English parody, which I think many of you have seen already because it did it did go viral. But uh, for anyone who doesn't know James English, is the Scottish Joe Rogan, I think, something like that. And uh, this is the, the Mark's parody. Boom, we're on. How we doing, brother? Good to have you on the pod. How are we? Big fan of the pod, James. Thanks for having me on. Thank you, thank you for coming on. Uh, with all my guests, I like to go back to the start where it all began, where you grew up, and how it all started. Mm, grew up in coding, right? Like, really hard, mate. Was, was that hard for you? When my great grand died, I lost it, mate. She was even my best friend in the fucking world, mate. My great grand. Like, people can fucking change. Everybody fucking can change. I don't care if you've dismembered 20 cunts, mate. Everybody's got a fucking past. Everybody can fucking change. You know, as the same. 
Do you have a man that fashion you eat for a day? Oh, fucking blood was squirting everywhere, man. Fucking rubbing his blood on me fucking nipples. It was squirting out of me fucking nipples. I was a good looking boy in Poso. I was a good looking boy. I fucking lost it, mate. I'll show you your friends, I'll show you your future. Back on the heroin, so King Cock for some skag. I was having fucking urges, mate. That's how it starts to drink the drugs, the scratch counts. That all releases dopamine, which is the equivalent of heroin. And then it leads to the weed. You can now follow me on all my social media platforms to find out who my latest guest will be and for for when my next pod goes live. <laughs> Enjoyed by the dog, as you can see. All right, let's get the dog full screen. This is, is that, Ziggy. 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 He's like, he's like David Bowie, look. All right, aye. Welcome, one welcome. Of the blue, I don't know what you call it when a dog has like one, one a blue eye and one black eye. Fuck knows. Ziggy. Anyway. Let's call it Ziggy. Let's call it Ziggy. So that was James English. James English. I'm just going to shut that door behind me, right? No worries, man. So people don't know, James English is probably, well, he is the biggest uh, Scottish podcaster, maybe one of the biggest UK podcasters just now. And I suppose he's that famous now that I think you get to a certain point of fame where you do expect a parody. But I think you're the first person that's actually did a James English parody that I know of. How's he taking it? I've seen that he commented saying, look up with a laugh emoji. Aye, well, he's... um. But he's taking, do you know what? See, see, comparison to fucking Jerry Cinnamon, he's he's taking it really, really well. He's he, he's been sounded message me a good few times, and uh, he sent me some voice notes which have been on it. I wish I could play them right now, but they're on my phone. But oh, so funny, man. Uh, but he's he's taking it pretty well, and uh, I think it's see. To be honest, it's like a it's about yeah, fucking ego boost in it for some of the some of these, uh, uh, well, some of these parodying. Imitation, the for, form of flattery, or whatever that goes. And you're calling your show The Drink the Drugs, The Scratch, the scratch Cards. And I'm going to put a link in the comments to anybody who wants to go. There's still tickets available. Aye, aye. There's about, about 400 left. There's still like a thousand, which I'm buzzing Fuck. about. So. That's amazing. Well, well, that's the link in the comments. For it. If you're watching this on YouTube, you'll be able to see the links in the comments there. Um, and uh, yeah, man, I'm, I'm gutted I won't be there for that. But um, is it you getting it filmed? Ah, it's going to be filmed. So, uh, brilliant, brilliant, man. You just said so. You're saying that so. So James English is taking it in a bit of fun. Jerry Cinnamon not so much. What, I'm just going to fill people in. But people, uh, what, what, what was Jerry Cinnamon got to do with that? But you you started a band called Tony Chimeric Chimeric. Chimeric. I say Chimeric. Some people say. Turmeric, some people say chimeric. I've never heard them say chimeric. You're the first. Chimeric. Chimeric. Tony Chimeric. And, we had uh, a the list of names. We, did, we, we had a few names that like, fucking. I thought Tony Chimeric was the best one. We had like Gary Masala. <laughs> well, you've got, or, the, um, you've got the alliteration for Tony. Nah, and, exactly. Somebody said, why did you not call him Terry? Terry Chimeric? Because it's like Jerry, and I was like. I don't know. Fuck, I should maybe do fuck it, that's pretty good. I know. We'll play a bit. We'll play a bit. Of the, like, right, so. We'll play a bit of the tune for people who don't know it uh, already. This tune, we were actually at Beauty Fest in July. Might have even been my birthday, and we were just—it was the, the weather. It was pissing the rain, and we were all in this van, and uh, this came on somebody's feed. So we played it through the the mini rig, and it's been stuck in my head ever since. Uh, so this is the earworm. If you don't know it, get ready for it to be stuck in your head forever. This is the Randan by Tony Chimrick. I was on the Randan and you were in the house. Got a healthy suntan And I've got it let loose I'm dishing at the parties Feeling kinda drunk And all the bonny lasses Who's one punk? I'm on the randan I'm on the randan I was 
in the house Feeling like a fan man Fuck this, I'm going out I can't get a taxi I'll get a train instead The city is my canvas And I've got it for the red I'm on the run Yes, that was the Randan by Tony Tumeric, Tumeric, Tumeric. And how's the internet? How's the internet out there? I really apologise for this man if he's cutting it. Uh, but yeah, we've got comments. Jigsaw Tiger says it's so catchy. Ali Grant has, is dangerously catchy. She's muted it for three minutes. <laughs> and um, and Instagram Graham saying that he liked that. And Custine says, I remember, you know, going to get tickets will be some laugh. There we go. We've got one ticket sold. Yeah, that's probably, thank you. That's probably, that's probably at least a pair. A pair of tickets sold there. Um, so it's, it's been worth it. It's been worth it. Um, so what, with the Tony, the Tony Tumeric stuff, you, you did play, uh, you call that Radio's Gallus Adventures, with a full band. So I didn't know what to expect, man. All I knew was that song. And... What what is the what's the plan with with this? Is this a a future fringe show or is this a um, a touring band? Um, well, I'd like to I'd like it to be a touring band. I think uh, so. Me, and my pal, my pal Stephen, see, he was playing the bass uh, in the band. We we wrote the songs together, and um, our plan was to write a full album, which we've basically written. We've written, I think we've written about twelve songs, and I think we've got about ten that we're pretty happy with. So. I think we wanted to write an album, release it, and just play gigs, really. And uh, managed to get Sorley. That's Sorley playing the drums on the Randa. Um, yeah, Sorley's... Uh, we, we all went to school together. Know, Sorley's uh, is, uh, the, the front man of DOS, who we interviewed last week. I'll put a link in the comments to anyone who missed that, because DOS are a fantastic band. And he's, oh, uh, so shout-outs to Sorley and DOS. Sorry, Mark, continue. Aye, aye, so... <laughs> Initially, we thought it was just a joke. So, like, we wrote, we wrote the first two tunes. We wrote, we wanted to kind of just parody these kind of songs. Do you know what I mean? Because we'd obviously work in class, but like these kind of songs singing about your your wee working class childhood, I just think they're quite funny. Um, I don't know if you've heard the second song we brought out about uh, what's it called, Summer Nights. It's jumpers for goalposts yeah. and all that. Ah, I could just tell yeah. that. Like, do you know what I mean? Like when people romanticise their wee childhood but like we never had we never had tellies we stayed out till to the street lights turned out turned on do you know what I mean um I just found that really funny so we we try we're trying to just have that theme with every song and uh stick to this cat like this characters as if this character's a real person do you know what I mean and we've got the we've got the album promo here just because is, is there a crowdfunder on the go there, there, there was but we we were going through a lot of that Christmas period, so we, we missed the deadline yet, but we stupidly didn't we didn't keep what we raised. Oh, fuck man. <laughs> um, yeah. so I'm a bit annoyed at that. I know I'm like fucking should I just do another one? I d I don't know yet. So um, Well I uh, aye, well I mean just just do another one and make the target what you got last time and just try and get it back. Aye. Well what's the album promo anyway? And uh, but if you've got any kids watching, maybe maybe this is not for the kids. If there's any kids watching the show for this one, but uh, we'll be back in a wee minute. But this is the album. It sounds pretty bad, do not it? Is that okay, then? It's all right. We fucking through that. Ain't my fucking daft, me. I'm not fucking daft. I'm not a fucking dafty, I'll fucking rip you in from my new fucking cunt. Oh shit. That's why it's called my wee diamond stunner loves an iron crew. Frustration. So 
sacrifice. Collaboration. Transcendence. Lost. Feel that, man. Oh, be built up. So that's, uh, that's the album promo. There was a crowdfunder. It didn't hit the target and you didn't tick the box. So how, how's that affecting the album? Um, it's kind of it's affected the momentum a bit. But obviously with my, my live show coming up, I'm kind of preoccupied now. But um, we've still got plans today. Like uh, I think we're going to turn the Rand Dan into a Scotland Euros tune as well. Scotland's on the Rand Dan with some, with some bagpipes. Um, okay. Is that is that what the violin's about? I noticed that you posted yesterday a violin version of the song. I know I was just as funny in a book because I, I love my my friend Eduardo. He's a like classically trained. He's I just love adding a violin to it. You know what I mean? But uh, we might do a version of that. I know you were asking me to do a version with a violin for Burns Night. So uh, that's right. We're doing Friction Burns Supper live from Mexico next Thursday, and we believe we have a a Glasgow studio that can stream live, hopefully the same studio that we, we did Michael's 24 hour live stream the other day and raised 2,000 pounds. Well, uh, shout out to everyone who supported that. Shout out to Michael for lasting 24 hours doing live music as mental. So uh, yeah, man, we're hopefully we can get artists to go to the studio and do it live and we can, I can produce it from the other side of the country. I'll have better internet by then because I'm going into the, I'm leaving the, the beach and going to the city. So yeah. Um, with, with regards to, do you, has Jerry got in touch with you? Has Jerry reacted to this, the Tony stuff? Um, no, he's not. I no, don't know. No, <laughs> I don't no, know. No. I've, a few people have told me they probably wouldn't really like it, but no. um, I've, I've kind of um, broken my, I said to myself, I was just going, anytime they mentioned Jerry, I'd be like, I don't know who that is, mate. Yeah, <laughs> just, right. just deny. But I've, well, I've broken I mean, he's, he's, I mean, he's selling out at Hamden Stadium two days in a row, I'm sure. That's famous enough for uh, parodies to start, do you know what I mean? It's the same with James yeah. English, it's just like, it's, it's a, a sign of fame. And I'm sure, he'll, I'm sure he'll take it in good fun. I'm sure he will take it in good fun. Uh, Jigsaw Tiger has pointed to the tatty, so that the totty went, didn't go over her head. But I was going to ask you, man, the, about comedy in general, because we're talking about Glasgow Comedy Festival, your stuff. Is there anything, anyone else that's performing at the Glasgow Comedy Festival this year that people should check out? Oh, man, there's loads. <laughs> there's loads. Um, some of the big headline gigs like are doing the King's Theatre. It's like Mark, Mark Nelson, he's, um, he's been around for quite a while. He's, he's doing the King's Theatre, so you should probably check out Mark. He's really, really funny. Um, all my pals in the comedy circuit are doing gigs, so I feel bad no naming, naming all one, of them. and then you need to name them all. Aye, so fuck them so, all. Let's just fuck them all then. Fuck them. Fuck them. Yeah, I, I think you should just go and see as many comedy shows as you can because there's a lot, a lot of good fucking comedians in Glasgow. Um, there's a there's a woman who I've, I'm I'm meeting her actually this week to. Uh, I think she's going to be opening for me at the Pavilion, and she's a Latvian woman called Jita. And I saw her at the stand last week, and she was—I mean, I was absolutely pissing myself. She was, she was phenomenal, and she, she had a kind of unique. She basically says, "I don't know if you've any, know any Latvians, but uh, Latvian accents are so fucking strong. They're like, they're like Borat times ten. Like they're no exact. Like they're so ridiculous. But she, she had this most. She has the most amazing voice, like an actress voice, and uh, and then also she has this kind of unique thing where she's a. Uh, she talks about her experience of going on a date in Glasgow and uh, being taken to an old firm match on a date, and it's just, it's fucking, it's magical, honestly. It's like, so what uh, was her I'll name, man? What was her, what was her yeah. name? Her name's Jita Blaze, so Jita is G-I-T-A, second name B-L-A-Z-E, Blaze. Yeah. And, um, oh, she's brilliant. So I'm, I'm, I'm really buzzing to, like, have her home for me, because she's just got a really, really unique voice, I mean, um, something different, because you do see a lot of similar 
repetitive stuff, especially coming out of Glasgow, do you know what I mean? Well, or coming out of America, I've, I've noticed that the the thing about the, the reoccurring theme in Netflix specials is everybody being cancelled and then getting 20 million to do a Netflix special. <laughs> I get, I mean, the reason I'm in Mexico is I get cancelled. I get cancelled for saying that cancel culture doesn't exist and then they just cancelled me. Do you feel what you're cancelled? Do you feel that you've got to be careful what you say these days? Is there any truth to this? I mean, I'd, 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 I'm kind of, maybe, maybe like in your case, it's not true, but I sometimes get feel that if you don't allow yourself to be cancelled, you won't really get cancelled. But I, and within reason, like, obviously, if you go and say something really fucking, if you say something racist or something, do you know what I mean? Then, of course, but uh, I think see, if you allow it and you're like, apologising for it, like, then people just fucking jump on you. They're like, um, so. As Lemmy always says, just deny. Just always deny. <laughs> just don't go, you down, want me fucking there. You want me fucking there. Don't back down, double down. Don't back down, says. double down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I suppose, I think a lot of the thing is, um, I've, I've seen a few sort of edgy comedians, but they miss the point. Like They maybe try to go like the Frankie Boyle route or the Jerry Sadowitz route, but they don't actually have very strong jokes and they seem to yeah, kind of like, they're like, oh, I'm too, I'm, people won't book me because I'm too controversial, yeah. or I'm too edgy, yeah. but it's like, no, man, I, I mean, I, I'd, honestly, I think everything's fair game in comedy, but it needs to make you laugh in that way that you go, oh, I shouldn't have laughed at that or something. But some people oh, are just okay. saying, some, uh, some people are just saying some sick jokes that don't have a punchline. Aye, 100%, mate. I've spoken about this a few times with my pals because I, I see it a lot. It's like, Frankie... Frankie can say those jokes because Frankie is probably, for me, one of the best joke writers I've ever seen. Do you know what I mean? And and people, I, you're right, people tend to just say something shocking and it's like, well, where's, where's a joke? That's no. <laughs> yeah. And people just think you're a horrible cunt because you're just saying this horrible <laughs> stuff when they punch like. Um, I, so, like, you need, I think you need to, the, the, the audience sometimes want to connect with you. Sometimes uh, some comedians won't. They feel that if, see if you just come on and be a horrible cunt and there's the jokes aren't that strong, like people really feel disconnected with you. Um, so I attend to you want the, the audience to be like, I mean, I, I think about Frankie Ball, he doesn't really connect with the audience, but he's, I don't know, I don't know how to describe Frankie Ball. I, I think, well, I think you've got Frankie Boyle is going up there. Well, he is doing that, the horrible bastard. I mean, I, I've seen, the, the last few times I've seen him was actually at the Glee Club where he's doing the in-progress things. I think he was just testing out jokes for his BBC yeah. show. So he's like, he does like 10 minutes off the top of his head and then he, well, pre-written material that he's memorised. Then he just starts, you know, he goes like, well, you've only paid £10, so I'll be reading the rest for you. You know, just jokes and just trying to uh, see, yeah, yeah. waiting for the O's and the and just seeing how the crowd reacted. it. But I suppose he has he has sort of come across as the horrible bastard um, over the years. Although he's kind of calmed down a little bit, I would say. Right. But but it's just good jokes. It's good right. jokes, and that's why people it makes people feel like they shouldn't have laughed at it. But it, but it's funny, and there usually is another dimension to a lot of the jokes. A lot of the time. Uh, you know the punching down stuff is actually you know uh, you know a metaphor for stuff that the Daily Mail say or the stuff that how other people think. So, I what wh wh on that note, then you said you're a fan of Frankie Boyle. Who's your who would you say is your top three comedians? Could you do a top three or a top five of all time? Like Scott stand America, up, America, stand everywhere. Up, every, stand well, what, no, just well, just any comedian actually doesn't need to be stand up. <laughs> Well, I love, I love, I love the Scottish ones that have done well. Do you know what I mean? Like, obviously, fucking Billy Kevin, Billy Kevin, Frankie, and Lemmy are like, uh, I wouldn't say they're on my top five, but like, especially they resonated with me. I mean, Lemmy, Lemmy's show for me was just like, Lemmy, Lemmy's show is just, it's just my kind of comedy. Do you know what I mean? It's just the best. I don't know. It was just really new and. He basically like took all the wee fucking all that awkwardness of being like I just had a weird awkward person and blew it up into all these sketches and I just pure resonate. I think it resonates with a lot of people. I think people that don't see people that are like, oh, let me shite. It's like 
they've, they've maybe no experience that feeling of yeah. being like the intrusive thoughts. Do you know what I mean? Um, of like the one where he's like saying hello to a Wayne on the bus and the Wayne keeps saying hi and he just fucking lamps the Wayne. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> um, aye, so aye, let, me, let me for me it's like he's obviously a mad cunt but I just I love him. I think a lot of Glaswood just love Lemmy. Um, yes, no, he's, a be- he's the best for me as well and you know I've, I've, I've did I've met, I've met him a couple of times when he was uh, playing the fringe. He was on after Dan McGarvey, so I was doing, I was backstage with Dan, and he was just he was just sound man. And uh, yeah, fuck it, shouts to Lemmy. He actually he actually did a Twitch raid. We were quite early on in lockdown. I was interviewing Darren Connell, and I was just like, all of a sudden we went from about I don't know forty viewers to about a thousand viewers, and I didn't know what was going on. And me and Dan, I think we both, I've not watched the back, I don't watch any of interviews back, but I remember me and Dan going, like, where is this all these people came from? But it was, I, it, it, let me just uh, twitch, ready this, which I didn't even know that was a thing, so I was confused. But yeah, shout out to my man, I, I think he's coming this, but I suppose it's a taste, some people just don't get it, they just don't get it, and that's, that's their problem. If we go, if we go further outside of Scotland, who... Would you say coming from the states or any or elsewhere? Um, oh, there's loads. Um, I mean, I think another one that really stands out is, is Norm Macdonald. Like he's, uh, and I've only really, I've only really got any Norm. Like just no, I haven't really discovered him. Like maybe a year before he died, which was only a couple of years ago. And the name I'd heard the name gone about, but I I just got fucking deep dived into his his podcast and less so his stand up. His stand up still, I love it, but. Like he's the Norm McDonald show is just oh fucking hell man he's just just everything about him, just the way he talked like he's mad stupid smile and his dress sense and just a big long like convoluted fucking all those big like the moth joke and all that I don't know if you've seen that um, yeah 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 I just uh, this is I I, I just love them man and uh, it's pretty sad to die um, I don't even know this is the same birthday as me as well. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. That was his, that's one of his famous jokes as well. But he's, yeah, I remember Norm. The thing about Norm is I remember it. You I'm old enough to remember his ITV show. I think it was on about half eleven on a Wednesday night on STV or Ulster or something like that. And then he just sort of it wasn't mainstream enough to kind of break through the UK mainstream. So he just kind of I thought he just disappeared. And then obviously when the podcast started taking off in YouTube and stuff, we started seeing him about again. And yeah, I, I, I kind of agree with you. I love his stand up as well, but I quite like when, I quite like seeing people's reactions when he's you know in a you know even like a a chat show environment or a podcast. Yeah, yeah. yeah, one of the best, no doubt, man. Did you see the Cat Williams rants? Yeah, that three hour podcast he did last week. No, From no, Cat, no saw that. Cat Williams. So basically, he just starts. He's just like having pops at Kevin Hart, uh, Steve Harley, P Diddy. Uh, Kanye West, it's just three hours of him just unloading and people, I don't know how much is true and how much is just at the wind up, but I, I, I did a wee, I did a wee I recap of it. it, I did a wee recap, it's actually, it did actually alright last week, I did a wee recap on it, but because I'm kind of working with one hand tied in my back here, the audio's a bit shit on my side, so, annoyingly so, and uh, one, I was going to ask, we regards to your Mikey Motion Roast. So now that the internet seems to be working okay, I think we can try and risk going live to Instagram. Uh, a lot of people that watch the show will probably be aware of Mikey Motion. Could you just explain what a roast battle is, first of all? Uh, well, basically, you, just get, you get paired up with somebody and you've just got to slaughter them, <laughs> basically. Uh, I like to meet them before. Um, my pal Amanda, I did one way a few months ago. Uh, meet up before them and just kind of tell each other about each other's lives and fun facts, just to give us some like fun, something to work with. Do you know what I mean? Um, Mikey didn't give me much to work with, but I must have managed all right. Um, I just talked about him being a junkie. <laughs> let's go. Let's go and check it out. Hold on. So this is this is the first clip. So. Hold on. Let's go. Make emotion. Try it again. Try it again. Okay, let's go. Mikey's a tiny man. 
Pinky calls Stuart Little Big Stu. Because <laughs> <laughs> he's a tiny cunt. <laughs> Mikey answers the age old question what if Kevin and Perry was set in Millport? <laughs> Thank you, hipster Uncle Fester. <laughs> um. Congratulations to Mark for landing the role as the main character in the 2024 remake of Nosferatu. <laughs> <laughs> when Mikey told me he was a DJ, I was shocked. He meant disc jockey, I thought he meant the press junkie. <laughs> uh, Mark looks and smells like a flat earther. Uh, <laughs> Mikey's second name is Motion, which is ironic because he's gone fucking nowhere. <laughs> Mikey looks like a bisexual owl. <laughs> he looks like he posted a letter for your daughter telling you you go into art school. <laughs> Mark recently had a massive mural of his face spray painted on the kids in <laughs> the skate park. The kids painted their own mural next to Mark's. So they just spray painted pedo beside it. <laughs> Me honestly genuinely hope that you die. And this cunt used to be a financial advisor. A guy who eats chocolate coins for his breakfast. <laughs> Mikey's a tiny <laughs> man. Amazing stuff. Uh, roast battle and Mikey Motion. I genuinely wish you'd fucking die. So, I mean, that, how's that stuff? I mean, obviously, you go into that. Are you just. Do you think. Uh, does it ever go too far, the roast battles? Because obviously, well, I'm, more a, I'm, more, I'm more familiar with the um, obviously the battle rap scene in Scotland, uh, which was it's obviously it's, it's not as popular as it was, but there was a golden age of Scottish battle rap maybe about nine nine or ten years ago. And uh, how, how does how bad does it get? Because I've never actually been at one of them. Comedy roasts. Oh yeah, a hundred percent need to go, man. They're, they're, I love them. I've only done I've only done two to be honest. Um, uh, but they're great. They're just, it's just having to having that free license to say just be horrible, and also the audience know what you expect. So people they go really, really fucking dark, and it's all right. Do you know what I mean? It's, it feels like a safe space. To, <laughs> and I like I so I I was going to go into what Darren was roasting Silas last week, but I'll, I'll leave it. Um, but he was going really dark with my other pal, and. Um, Everybody was loving it. Do you know what I mean? And it's weird because you probably some it just would not be acceptable on another night. So it's just, it's ah, it's weird. But I love it, man. I can't wait to do the next one. Though there's a, is it when, when I remember the wee, I think actually I've been to one. It was ages ago though. I think the wee man did one at the stand. So I remember that Neil did one, and uh, I think it was it was comedians versus rappers night. That's what it was. <clears throat> Comedians versus rappers, and the, the rappers always lose. Uh, I mean, I think it's because right. it's, it's in a comedy club, and just the sort of, uh, the, yeah, it just seems to be that the comedians always win because it's maybe it's like playing an away game if you're a rapper <laughs> in that environment. I get, yeah. So you've got the home crowd on your side. Well, it's hard to be cool when you're you're fucking rapping and somebody just in a monotone voice slaughtering you back. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, wh when is the next comedy roast battles? Is, is, there, is, it a, is it a is it a monthly thing or is it? I actually don't know. Monk, so Monkey Barrel do one. Uh, so if you go Monkey Barrel's Instagram, I actually don't know the date for the next one. But uh, Monkey Barrel and Black Friars is the one my pal Ian Ian Pringle organises. Um, so that's the only two ones I know at the moment. It's Black Friars in Glasgow and Monkey Barrel in Edinburgh. Speaking of uh, Edinburgh, speaking of Edinburgh, is there any plans for Edinburgh Fringe this year yet, or is it too early? Um, I think I think I'm going to do this show at the Pavilion and uh, see after that. I'd, I, don't, I don't know if I'll just go and do another hour of stand up at the Fringe, or maybe try. And, I don't know how how well James English at the Fringe would go uh, with maybe an international audience. But I thought about it because James is actually really big around the UK. Do you know what I mean? So I thought, like, it'd be cool. It'd be cool to do some sort of kind of musical or stage show that was, I don't know, like a kind of addiction or something stage show and that featured the James English podcast. And I don't know. I'd, I've had those ideas flying about, but uh, I for the fringe, I don't. I genuinely don't know yet. But I'm hoping to just stay there. 
shows. How, what, what's the, how would you describe the fringe in three words? Um, fuck. Um, it's exhausting. It's demoralising. No, no, it's, <laughs> it. it's, it's, it's expensive. Is what it is, and it's expensive, demor demoralising, and exhausting. Uh, well, it's, no, that sounds like it's terrible. It's, it's great. It's like a. I'll be honest. My last one there was terrible because I was just I was getting on it every night, um, <laughs> and it wasn't good for my sobriety. Um, I'm sober now, but I I, I wasn't doing the fringe, and I was like, but I was like, how the fuck am I meant to? I'm coming out of a gig. My pals are standing there with a fucking a pint a fag and a patsy and Kylie Minogue's playing and I'm like how can I not get on it right now do you know what I mean especially you know what you know what I mean like every, the higher coming off stage you're like right how am I how am I going to prolong this do you know what I mean yeah man I mean it's, uh, it, took, it took me years to actually figure out that you could get wasted after the gig and then <laughs> uh, so I feel like I, for the last uh, I don't know six or seven years I'm quite I've been quite proud of myself for only getting wasted after I've performed, but also starting to realise I'm hitting that age where the hangovers are so bad. That I'm like, do I really need to do it? But I suppose um, what, what do you do? Do you just go for a jog? But I mean, you you, you did Gallus Adventures and you, you stayed sober, and that's uh -huh. that was a that that could have that's not an easy environment for. Um, to, no, so I how, was that. Aye. How how did you deal with that? How sober were you? How long were you sober for before you you played that, for example? Oh, that was that was really um, fucking hell. That was that was only been a month. When did we? When did, was that? Twenty September. Uh, don't, I don't. It was September, definitely. Aye, aye. so I'd only been sober about a month. Aye. Um, but I it was alright. It was good. It, it's it's good. Like your mind's clear and you're you're focused. But after it, I'm just like right. I did hang about for a bit, but they just got to the point where like your pals are on a different level for you, and you're just like it's time to go. Um, but it was brilliant. I loved it. Well, there may there may be another. We'll, we'll try and maybe do another one at the end of the summer. I, I'm still in Mexico, so I'm trying not to plan too much stuff. But I'm back for festival season anyway. I've got I've got some festivals booked already, so hopefully hopefully we'll be able right. to do another one. Aye, but it's just so uh, how. How, so, on the notice of sobriety, are you feeling good for it? Are, how's your, has it improved your writing? What's the, the benefits to, to going sober? Oh, everything. Every, I'll be honest, every, every, everything in your life gets better. <laughs> um, it's hard though, because you're like, you kind of have to fucking deal with your, you've nothing to fucking numb your, I don't want to say pain, but you've got nothing to like fucking distract yourself or just zone out like you've got to just fucking deal with everything but for me that's the only way I'm going to no fucking ruin my life because <laughs> I'm bad mate I'm literally I'm bad I, I just I couldn't then know where to stop and I'd just binge but I was I wasn't even a big drinker or like drug taker or whatever but it's just when I did that I just I felt fucking awful so I just I had to I had to just fucking get up but I mean, sobriety is amazing. Actually, we always make jokes, like me and um, my pals, like in sobriety, we make jokes about the stuff you hear and like I go to meetings and stuff, and um, just some of the stuff people have is brilliant. Like, uh, they're always saying, Ash, we say, right, you need you. It's like you're going for a coffee with your pal and fucking Costa. Ash, we say, right, you need you. See, I couldn't enjoy it. I'm a wee nail shop, mate. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's what's the bright geezer. I'm like, it's a fucking Kit Kat, mate. <laughs> it's brilliant. Well, it's, a it's, it's like a, um, I don't know if it's a, a Scottish thing or not, but uh, for just like two pals just to go out for a coffee, just it's, it seems quite unrealistic when you're younger. D definitely, <laughs> I've, I've started I've started going for coffees with my, I'm, 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 I'm not sober. I mean, I actually just failed the dry January. So that's how, <laughs> I, I, go, I go to every... A drama geddon the about nine. I called it drama geddon. Oh and, uh, uh, and I got to about I think the ninth or something. But it's fucking roasting over here, and I just made my excuse. Oh well, a wee, a wee cold pain after walking up all the hills will be fine. But yeah, but I, I suppose we've got to get older. I think it's it's good though to actually have 
go for those coffees with my mates that are in, that are in recovery and stuff. And it's good to not just... You know, why is it that you need to be absolutely paralytic to talk to one of your close friends? It's weird. I suppose that's, <laughs> that's, why, that's, why, well, I suppose that's quite good. Music's been a really a saving grace because obviously that's actually given me the opportunity. If you like your band members, which isn't always the case, it's not always been the case, but I like my band members to know. And obviously there's no point in going for... We don't, everyone's busy. We don't have time to go for a, a jam and not right. get work done. Right. So... It's good to actually just go, and music's a good way to connect with people. And you, you said you were in a cover band as well. A Smiths cover, cover band? band? No, 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 no. You play the Smiths? No, all right, aye, no. Aye, sorry, aye, you're right. Uh, <laughs> no cover band, just me and my, my pal and Rod. Aye. Um, I've been to see a few Smiths cover bands, and they're brilliant, but uh, no, I, me and my pal Eduardo plays the violin, so we do... Just a wee side project because we, we both love Smiths, so we just do uh, we do Smiths guitar and violin covers on TikTok. You know, people people seem to love them. Do you know what I mean? Um, but I, we're going to try and cover every Smiths song eventually. But I got a few different things on. Where, where do you stand on the Is Morrissey a fanny debate? Well, I think he is a fanny, but it's like, sometimes you just feel like he's. He's my fanny. <laughs> no, he's just like, that's what it kind of feels like. I'm like. I know he's a prick. I know people who've worked with him. Uh, well, my pal Connor, who's played with some of Morris's guitarists, have said, like, I mean, he is obviously very famous and very fucking. Um, what's the word? I can't even think. I'm having a brain fart. He keeps himself to himself, but he. They say, like, when he's touring with his band and all that, he doesn't, he doesn't share a hotel with them, doesn't he rehearse with them. Um, and even some stories about him fucking... Uh, somebody told me a story about him. I don't know. Some, uh, about, what was it he did? It was one of the drummers in his band. They basically sent him and his wife home from the tour or something. I don't know. I don't fucking know. But anyway, I heard he's a prick. I heard he's a prick at all. But I think that it gets to the point that if you're going to be a prick, go all in. Don't don't back down, double down, as Lemmy would say. Aye. And I think he's doing that really well. Like... You don't, it's horrible to hear people that you like are a bit of a prick, but when they're all in, super over the top fannies, then go for it. You know, it's that kind of diva thing, that kind of aye, super diva thing. Aye, attractive about that. Aye, I, 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 I'd, I'd expect him to be, I wish, if I met him, I'd want him to be a prick to me, do you know what I mean? <laughs> you'd be, you're, you're absolutely disillusioned because they say never meet your heroes, and you meet Morrissey aye. and he's really nice to you. He's just like, oh, you <laughs> I know. I've seen, I, you did a really good reworking of my. I seen the reworking of my, my music on TikTok. I'm a big fan <laughs> of your work, doing my work. Yeah. Um, just talking on social media. Um, what is the best uh, place to keep up with you? Because I know that you. I've not really got into TikTok yet, man. I did actually make a TikTok account because there's just so many. Of my friends are doing well on there, and I, but I'm I'm just stuck at 130 followers and I, all my content that I've tried to repurpose. It's shite yeah. and it's not working uh, out for me. But where is we, I know that you're doing well on Instagram and stuff, and you know all my, I, I mean your James, your James English parody and the Tony Turmeric uh, parody, they all seem to go viral on Facebook because I'm a I'm a boomer that way. I'm still on the Facebook. So where where, where are you? Where are you? Where can people follow you? And what platform is working best for you just now? Would you say? Well, it's funny you say that because Facebook. Neither of my sketches have went have went anywhere on Facebook. It's been a bit frustrating, but it's, it's hard. I don't know. They just have no the algorithm or the way I've fucking edited the videos. Or I so the randoms are really. Not many people have seen it on Facebook, uh, nor the James English video. I think it's Instagram and TikTok really new. Twitter was just a bit yeah. Um, I don't know. I did it really goes on Twitter anymore. But see me when I post stuff on Twitter, like the James English video went as massive on Twitter. It's got like two million views. Uh, but it's funny, I'll do the video and then I'll do a follow-up post going, come see my show, <laughs> with a picture of James English and it gets one like, do you know what I mean? Um, I'd say that's Instagram. A, that's interesting, so, 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 we, so we, that's quite an interesting point because obviously you got from 2 million views on Twitter or um, how, how, many, how, how many did you get in um, TikTok, how many did you get on in Instagram? Oh, did, aye, all of them combined. Uh, all of them combined, what are you saying? For that, uh, oh, 
So on t- Instagram, it's about, I think it's like half a mil on Instagram, and then it's like similar, maybe to a quarter of a million on TikTok. So talking about three million views three mil. probably. Or. So what would you, and then obviously people can actually, people have probably stolen your content and up, re-uploaded it as well. So you're talking about, we could say five million. I bought it off five million. What, what boost did you see in followers? Was it what you expected? Was it a welcome boost? Was it, I thought that would have translated to more followers? No, it, it definitely did give me a lot. I mean, my problem I've had with social media is I just, I can't eat. It's just always giving me anxiety. So I really, it's, I really fucking forced myself to post because uh, I really don't want to. And I really, I just, I don't, I don't know. I just, I'm sure it gives a lot of people anxiety, but I just didn't want to do it. And I just felt the more that I was putting in a corner, where I was like, I need to do this to, for it to be seen. Um, and it's, sorry, what was the question again? My brain's farting. Just, me. just, I, sorry, I was just saying, like, did the, the, the. Oh, the followers, like, I. Well, yeah, just, yeah, just, well, just in general, like, you know, because I know that some people, have adv- that I know have had viral videos and it's just totally, it's been quite life changing for them. Then there's other people who have had viral videos and they just said that, you know, they didn't really get any boost off it at all. It didn't help with followers, aye, it didn't help with aye. ticket sales. Then you've got other people, like, for example, I'm just thinking off the top of my head, there's a good example of Zara Gladman. She's had a couple of sort of things that have went oh, aye, 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 and she's just sold it more and more for her, and it's her first. Her first proper show that she's doing, so shout out to Zara. But so there, there's an example of something that's actually it's turned into something. But then I've got other mates that yeah. just like that they went really viral, and then it just didn't really translate. So I'm just trying to wonder where you sort of sit in that scale and what. Well, I think my like my problem is always that I see when the iron's hot, I'm far, I can't, I'm nowhere to be seen. <laughs> do you know what I mean? So I'll do something, and then people love it, and they're like, oh, "He's mad," and then I'm like, "No." Like, I, I, I don't know, what, it's not that I don't want to do it, I just, I tend to fucking go into hiding after I get, do you know what I mean? And, like, pe- I, that's another thing, people are always wanting you to do, do another fucking, do another James Dings, do another Ron's Quality Snacks, do it. and it's like, I, I probably could do, like, I'm obviously doing the James Dings for the live show, but some sometimes I feel like you just have to leave stuff, do you know what I mean? Um, Quality over quantity. Aye, like, and that, that's the issue I've had is, like, I, I watched my wee brother, like, some of my wee brother's done, I noticed he, he, he's been doing, like, like sketches, I mean, I was seeing him the day, actually, because we were talking about this today, and I was like, Paul, you've, you've done fucking a lot of viral videos, you know what I mean, a lot of them have went massive, and he, he didn't really take off for him until he started consistently posting to TikTok every day, and um, it's something I struggle with consistency, and so does he. He's got fucking ADHD like me, and he. Um, but it's, it's about consistency, and it, it kind of. I mean that that album promo thing I, I filmed with Steve-O, That took us fucking three months to film it, first to get all the different parts of the video. We're terrible at editing that, so it took us ages to do that. Um, it took us about three months from the beginning to the end, and uh, like that got like two hundred likes. You know what I mean? Whereas if I just film myself chatting shit on the phone, it might get a hundred thousand likes. But that's the thing, I don't date because of likes, I date because I enjoy it, but it's sometimes a bit like fucking hell, that was a lot of effort. Um, and it's hard to get in, nobody's seen it, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's, it's, um, it's mysterious, like, how... I've noticed the, the less effort I've put into things that have went quite well. I've, I, about last year I started doing a wee bit more like news commentary, so just basically, just covering it, and just like try to give myself a goal of right, okay, I've got this, there's this news story happening and I'm just gonna try and cover it in my own way. And it takes about an hour of my day to get it all together. And you know, I did one, the biggest, the, the biggest video I had last year was a very boring breakdown of Ren, you know the rapper Ren, it got to number one oh, yeah. on an album. It's, it was nothing, it was just basically putting out some facts with a little bit of opinion and it got like 26,000 views in uh, a couple of days. And it uh, wasn't a lot of work went into that. I just went, oh, I realised the charts are coming out, so I was just ready. If it gets number one or number two, I'm going to comment on it. And then yeah. like, the amount of effort that goes into doing a podcast or, or, or making a music video or, you know, actually writing something good and then it just disappears. It doesn't really go anywhere. So I, I, I don't know what, I mean, 
Well, well, Shouts to Paul for doing it every day, but do, does he have to plan it out? Because obviously I've got, and I'm pretty sure I've got some sort of undiagnosed ADHD. Does he, does he just have like a whole bunch of stuff at one go, or does he actually just wake up every day and go, I'm going for it? Well, he's not done that for a while, actually. Um, but he's, I think I just something else that comes to his head that day. He was like, I just fucking film my short video. Um, and I think as you do, you do see a lot of fucking things that just are quickly made and, and shite. And it's, it's like, I don't, I don't want to fucking put something out if I'm not happy with it. Do you know what I mean? But um, how do you know if it's good? But the thing is, you don't know. You don't know. Right. You don't know if it's good. That's the thing. You do something and it's other people like it and you're like, I thought that was shit. Right. But I do agree with the fact that if you, I think you're quite right to have stopped the James English one because if you just start, you could have just started doing one of them every week and then you're just the James English guy. Ah, yeah. Or, it's, it's, or, it's, or you're it's just the Jerry Cinnamon guy. So, the one with the Jerry Cinnamon thing is just, it's like, today I feel the album, I think it's, it's fun. Like sometimes I think, see, the pettiness is, is, can be funny. Do you know what I mean? Um, and obviously me and Steve were obviously big South Park fans and the way the way they roast people is just amazing. Like and I'd like today's stuff like that, do you know what I mean? And kinda of bring that kind of roasting back. Because uh, it's all about intention, see man. If you're doing it just to be a horrible if you're just if I'm if I'm roasting James Douglas just because I don't like him, I'm jealous of success. Like it just I think I would come across, but I just I find them it's just like a parody that just keeps on giving. Do you know what I mean? Like, I actually howl laughing at some of the videos they put it. Like, ah, you know, I just think it's funny to parody things. Um, have you, uh, are, you, are, you, are you familiar with the work of uh, Mike Redbar? No, there's Mike, is that? Right, Redbar, okay. Redbar is a horrible, horrible bastard, a cruel man, a hater. The definition, the very definition of a hater. But he's, he's hilarious, man. He's absolutely hilarious. His uh, tagline is give it a year. So everyone goes, I hate this guy. And it's give it a year. And that is, the, <laughs> that is the case, man. That is the case. But I think the reason that I started liking this guy is because he's so creative with his hatred. He contradicts himself, you know. He'll just, but he'll just find a reason to dislike someone based on a short <laughs> clip. And uh, Yeah, check him out. What I would, say, what I would suggest to anyone is, is maybe if there's a... He kind of sort of mainly focuses on the comedian uh, podcast world, but maybe a bit of music. But if you just type in Red Bar... I think I have, I think I have somebody showed me him, actually. Yeah, it takes a while to get into it, but if you, it, when he's roasting someone that you dislike, it's brilliant. But sometimes you're just roasting people that you're like, oh, they seem quite nice, yeah. that's, that's harsh. I like um, some people, they, um, I, like, I like when people... What I quite like is when you roast some, they see people who like the person... It's like people who like the person, people who hate the person come together and go, that was quite funny. Do you know what I mean? It's um, like the people who don't like them are like, ah, fucking class, I fucking hate that cunt. And then you get other people going, I like James, but that was brilliant. So it's, it's quite, um, it's an achievement that, I think. Like, well, that's it, people, like, that are, uh, right. people that are fans of James, you need to be a fan or at least be aware of his work to, to find it funny. Aye. So it's... Uh, um, now we've got um, just uh, a couple of comments quickly. There's James Stewart. Okay, he's saying face plant Mexico. How's the snorkeling? So is your flippers, a Gringo? I don't have flippers. <laughs> I'm walking about with a pair of Skechers, which Mikey Motions already slagged me for wearing. Uh, but I, I just thought I, I didn't know that Skechers were uncool. I just I'm that old now. I was just like, what they've got motion? What is it? Memory foam feet. I'm like, that's just, that's just fucking great. Aye, comfort, I, comfort. I'm going to be doing a lot of walking, so I don't give a fuck. So I, I'm still wearing socks and sketchers and a pair of shorts, so... You'd get, you get based with a fucking firework for that back in the day. Uh, this is uh, great. Lo Graham, loving the stream of the Odyssey Part 2. Great to get live stream again. I don't know what you're talking about. Um, oh, yeah, so Faceplant, what he's talking about there is because there was a rumour that was set about that I actually faceplanted during the Mickey 9 set, which is totally untrue. There is no video footage of that, so I don't think that's true. And it was just after James Stewart had, uh, had passed me a, a funny cigarette. Um, Stuart Graham saying I enjoyed that. Uh, but what we're going to do is we're actually going to just cut this off because it's 8 o'clock, we're going live to Club Anyway, and so uh, if you don't know what Club Anyway is, it's uh, every Wednesday night we have a live DJ and who tonight is Filthy Rich from Pedigree Scum, which is a great name. 
and uh, we've got pen case doing the visuals. So I'll put the link in the comments here if you're watching it on YouTube. If you're not watching this on YouTube, then go to youtube.com forward slash you call that radio for live DJ and visuals from some techno. I think it's, I think it's some banging techno from eight till nine. And this Sunday, we've got Gordon Raphael, Strokes producer. It's, it's pre-recorded from the book launch. I interviewed them um, last year. Uh, Mark, just to, to finish off, uh, let's, let's get the plugs in here. How can people keep in contact with your work and how can they support what it is you do? Um, if, well, if you follow me on Instagram and TikTok and Instagram, my name's Black Mark. We have two Ks on Mark. And uh, TikTok, it's Mucus Black because it's mucus because my sister's pals used to call me mucus and just look at me with disgust so that stuck um <laughs> follow me on tiktok and all uh hi and uh come to my show and um, my links in my uh, insta and tiktok bio to my pavilion show on the 21st of march um if you're a fan of james english or just stand up in general you you love it so come along I put the link in the comments here. It's also in the bio for anyone who's not watching it live. I've already put it into the info. Uh, thank you very much, Matt. Uh, good luck with the, the no show. Worries. I'm glad it's getting filmed, man, because I don't think I'm, I'm still going to be in the wrong side of the world. You might do another one in the future. I hope so, man. I hope so. If it goes, if it goes well, I hope, I hope it goes in tour. I hope it goes to the fringe. Uh, so best of luck with it, man. And, no worries. Uh, what, have we, have you got, uh, we've got time for... Um, a, is there anything you would like to... Will we finish with a tune? Is there anything else we can play just to finish the show? We've got two minutes. Two minutes before club anyone. Um, can you play the tune? you got a guitar with you? Aye, uh, right here. Right, go for it, man. Sorry, I put you in the spot there. What, but what, take what it away. Just anything, man. You you you've, got two, you've got two minutes. Fuck, what have I got to play? The Smiths. I don't know if two people are wanting the hand, Dan. Go for the hand, Dan. Give us the hand, Dan. Either and then. I'm gonna get a pick. I'll do that strip back first. I'm Ronan Keaton. I was on the rain down. You were in the hoose. I've got to have a sun town. I've got to let it loose. I'm dishing at the party, feeling kind of drunk. And not a body lasses, there's one for I'm on the run down. I'm on the run down. You are on it undone, and I was in a hearse, feeling like a fine time. But guess I'm gonna, I can't even get a taxi, or get a ticket stand. He said he has my canvas, I'm gonna be the man, I'm on it undone. That's fucking funny. Superb. Thank you very much. Mark Black. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, yeah. All the best for the... Cheers, man. So that's Mark Black. He's got a show on the 20... Let me just check again. He's got a show on the 21st. Thursday, 21st of March at the Pavilion. 1,000 tickets sold. 400 to go. So go and get a ticket because that will sell out. Yeehaw, cheers, Mark, says James Stewart. Hi, Stuart. Great chat from Mark Squared. Yeah, double Mark tonight. Get some Mexican hip hop on. I've actually, I've been building up my playlist, man. I've got a strong Mexican playlist. I'll do a whole night of Mexican tunes very soon. Let's go to club anyway. So if you don't know, just click that link in the comments right now. It's techno time. Click that link and you'll, I'll join you for a dance and in the chat. This is club anyway on the other channel. That was Mark Black. See you, club, anyway. Bye! You call that Mexico, Mexico, Mexico. They talk that Spanish flow, Spanish flow, Spanish flow.